Welcome to Event Radio, covering local drag racing, stock car racing, motorcycles, go-karts. If it's got wheels and you can race it, you'll hear about it here. Event Radio is Motorsports Radio on steroids. Now, let's join your hosts, Spivy Williams and Terrible Tea Guy. All right, guys, we are uh, welcome to the next edition of Event Radio. We're going to have some big fun today, and, and this is going to be a very special show for T and I because we're we're talking to uh, the first lady of Beach Bend, that uh, the Beach Bend Park and, and, or, and Splash Lagoon. This show is special to us because T and I actually grew up out here. Right? Right. Central. Yeah, yeah. We, we not only grew up at the racetrack, and guys, if you are not familiar with Beach Bend and you haven't been here, if you're in bum de bum de or wherever you are and hadn't heard about it but uh if you come to beach bend raceway the park is on top of the hill after you as you're going down through there and you'll see her daddy's favorite ride the kentucky rumble roller coaster sitting on top of the hill that you have to go right by in order to go to the racetrack but we spend a lot of time at the racetrack but today we're going to get to tell you about the part that uh uh normally we don't get to tell you and and with this being a motorsport show that's a little different but we get the home cooking today. Yeah, we get the home cooking. For, for us, this is actually just as important as the motorsports because Beach Bend Raceway is such a family venue. When you come in there to race, usually mom and the kids have absolutely nothing to do. They're bored to tears. And, and here is, boy, it's not like that. There's a place for them to go that is a blast to go to. Uh, no doubt one of the, I think it's fourth tourist destination in the state of kentucky and uh man it's just so cool but, when we was kids you know our parents would drop us off at the amusement park oh they bring a bicycle we, out here yeah, yeah we'd, we'd play spend all day the races started then go down to the racetrack yeah yeah and and in new uh i don't know if you heard our you earlier show in, did you? no we okay. actually paid to get it the whole dime back then <laughs> we could afford that but anyway we uh uh we came out and we played and we had a big time and and this show like i say is going to be special because we're going to find out how it has been resurrected, if you will, from from a fun, fun place back then into the lull of, of almost leaving us and now brought back to the coolest place since white bread. Race Central. Oh, Bowling yeah, Green. man, it's great. We're going to take a quick little break, and then we're going to introduce you to the first lady, Miss Charlotte Gonzalez. We will be right back, guys. All right, guys, we are back, and uh, we have Miss Charlotte joining us. Miss G- Charlotte, how are you? lady i'm doing great trying to stay warm today Spivy. boy you know i don't understand how you do all that you do you got to be the busiest lady on the planet You've heard of what is it uh jack of all trades master of none <laughs> yeah well i you know i i think your your magician mr dinky gallon has conjured up something to yeah. to give you a little extra energy gal because you're going and doing all the time th- all the time beach bend is such a fun place uh, growing up as a little girl, did you ever think that you'd run an amusement park? No. <laughs> Farther thing from your mind? Never in a million years, no. And, and, and what's really cool, guys, if, if, if you're not aware, her and her husband also operate another racetrack, too, Music City Raceway in, in Nashville, uh, along with Beach Bend Park. The, that this, is being the jack of all trades. Well, it really is. I, I, I try to go to bed when we come to one of these events and get just a little sleep and come back out and maybe do it the next day, and you're still after it. You know, I, it yeah. blows my mind. I, I don't know. I'm not doing something right. Well, we run wide open in the in the summertime, Spivy, around here. I mean, we literally we'll, we'll run. Some days, 15, 16-hour days are normal, and, and you kind of get in a routine. You know, when you do that for a few days, you just kind of get in a routine, and you do it. But I can tell you, by the end of September, when it's all starting to slow down, you're ready for a break. <laughs> You're wanting it to slow down just a little yeah. bit, right? Because there's so many events at the racetrack that uh, bring in thousands of people. And then you guys now bring in thousands of people on the other end. Yeah. 
Uh, man. You know, Beach Bend is a busy, busy place in the summertime. You know, well, you it should be. It's fun. We take <laughs> two or three back-to-back weeks at the racetrack where, you you know, you've got thirty to 40,000 coming in to events down at the racetrack. Sometimes in June, we're around the Hot Rod Reunion and the Harvey yeah. Race and then the Ford uh, Race, you know, about almost every other weekend you got a huge crowd coming in down there. Then you got a regular weekend. But at the same time, we got the parks running wide open. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot to keep up with. Well, you know, here. I had always said when, when I, of course, I'm an old fat guy. And when I'd always said when I got to this age, I wanted to retire in Daytona Beach because there was so much that went on. I've completely turned that around. There's more stuff going on right out here that I like. I'm happy to be at home. Right, right in aren't our you, backyard. Yeah. With Beach Bend being here, sure. Yeah, we're happy to be at home. We don't have to go anywhere else. And it for this little radio show, you're a godsend to us, Gal, with fuel prices where they are, because we could come out and bring people some really good shows right here from from you all. Yeah, well, Beach Bend is a very unique. I don't. I would venture to say there's not another property like this anywhere in the country. Oh, I don't think so. You know, to combine the you know, world class racing that we have here at, at Beach Bend Raceway, and then to have a really nice family amusement park and water park, literally adjacent. You know, and then to have the campground on the other side. I mean, you can literally come here and spend your whole summer vacation and, and do something for dad, take him to the track to some events, and mom and the kids can play in the park. I even had one of the racers one day, Scotty Richardson, told me one day. Of course, Scotty's a one of the best drag racers ever. He told me one day on his way out the the racetrack gate, he said, you know, it should be a requirement that every racetrack has a swimming pool. <laughs> so well, even really. our racers love, you know, having that, the family fun time, you know, in between rounds. Keeps and, everybody know. happy on the trip home, you know, to be able to stop and play a while. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah that, that that's what I said in the beginning. Mom and the kids, they got to have fun, too, on those deals, you know. It's, it's not one-sided. You guys have expanded this thing unbelievably since Terry and I remember. I mean, we we, we were on an earlier show talking to the little lady that uh, does your promotion stuff, and she said she always asked people if if they hadn't been to Beach Bend lately about the stinky monkeys. And, <laughs> and so that that's back in our era. We remember uh, them. Those monkeys were known for a lot of things. Yeah, they were known for a lot of other stuff too. But uh, you guys have, have brought this thing around. You've got rides that are world-class that you – you find that the uh, the parks that are so called the big guys, which I, they're no bigger than you all now, you know, but but Beach Bend is the big guy. They are the big guy. That's right. But you got a very special ride too that uh, came from a very special guy's ranch that I think is really cool. That uh, came from Neverland. Oh. Michael Jackson, you know, <laughs> cows and horses, <laughs> different yes. kind of ranch, Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, yes, baby, we do have. We've got a one of a kind ride there. We, uh, we've we been very fortunate here. Dad has let us go out and just about every year, at least every other year, go out and do some major new addition for the, for the amusement park. Because, quite frankly, the park had gotten really run down. I mean, it practically went out of business except for the swimming pool right. back in the right. early 80s right. uh, when Mr. Garvin passed away. And Ronnie Millsap came in here and ran it for two seasons. And it, it was in sad, sad shape. Um when when dad called and told me he'd bought beach bin you know we were all excited because i mean we grew up here well we, you were like us i mean you're not as old as t and i but but still it was the fun place if you were a young person in this well, whole area as a kid growing up we had many family reunions here at the park down in the campground in the, in the picnic area sure sure and then on just about every sunday all summer long we came and dad raced oh yeah and we were the I was kids. racing with him, I know. <laughs> we, we were the kids that were bored. You know, I can remember tripping over trailer ramps and, you know, right. having to go get stitches and things like that or, you know, always into meanness because we were bored down at the racetrack. But when we came to this racetrack, we always knew if we were good that day, get we'd, get, we'd get to stop on the way out. And Dad would pull off to the side of the road and we'd get to go over to the park and have some fun. Yeah. You know. I can remember in the early 50s or mid 50s coming out here early in the morning on 4th of July. And they'd have a grease pole that they'd put $50 on top, and people try to <laughs> climb it and, and catch guineas. A lot of people don't know what a guinea is, but if you call it a guinea, you got like 25 And then have fireworks later that night. I mean, oh, it's yeah. an all-day deal. And, and they'd have airplanes fly over at the racetrack in the old drop track one, and drop, drop money. Drop one dollar bills out. Drop money. Boy, and those people would be out there, and it was 
<laughs> it would have been neat to have a movie of that because it was funny what some of those people did. But you know, they, what year was that, Spivy? Oh, gosh. Are, now, well, 54 you just give me the, through 55, maybe? Yeah, tell us. Because I don't remember that. Well, you shouldn't. You're not old enough to remember <laughs> that. We are. But, but you know, we we were little kids then. We started, Terry and I started racing go-karts down there. And they use the, on Friday night, they race go-karts. Well, then on Saturday night, they ran stock cars. I th- no, I take that back. They did something else on Saturday night. I don't remember what it was. Anyway, we didn't get to come on Saturday night. But on Sunday, they did drag racing in the morning and stock car racing in the afternoon. Well, we would come with Elmo, and and we we did our thing on Friday night, you know. So we would come up in the park while he was doing his thing at the drag strip, you know. And then there's some funny stories what happened there you hear about in our first show. But uh, uh, it, it was, I don't know, Terry, what – you know, there was just so much to do. It was unreal. I can remember riding the wild mouse and the little hand carts. I had my own little schedule. I'd go through one, then go the next, and go the next. Right, right. Play the miniature golf. And uh, like Everything. I said, I grew up yeah. out here, and I got to ride most of them free because everyone knew me. Yeah, yeah. They thought I lived here, I guess. Yeah, well, that'd be too. We, we were here so much that they, they thought we were a fixture. But but the ride that we're talking about came from, from the Michael Jackson estate, and you guys went out there and bought it, and it's a – it's like a sea dragon, isn't it? Is that yeah, what? It's a, it's a, it's a what they call a swinging pirate ship. It's actually named the Sea Dragon, and uh, it was Michael's favorite ride. Yeah, it was. was at Neverland, and we actually, we have pictures of it here at over there by the ride of him on that particular ride, and uh, you know we were kind of in the market for that kind of a ride. You know the uh, the research and development team here at the park consists of me and my three kids. Well, y'all do a good job. You done well, <laughs> very yeah, y'all well. Do a good job. We go out and we visit other parks, and, yeah, you know, yeah. and we see what we like, and I see what the kids. Do you need like. any help, Charlotte? <laughs> <laughs> sure, you can make the next next trip with us. But we go out into other places, you know, in the off season when we close down here, we head to we go to Florida and California and all over just to see what's going on in other parks. Well, that's a smart way to do it. That was a fun ride. That it's a good family ride. It's not too scary. But it still gives you some air time when, when the boat swings oh, sure, up on each sure. side. and So we've been looking for one, and we found out Michael Jackson's ranch was in trouble. He, they, he had declared bankruptcy at the time, and they were going to do a big auction out there at Neverland. And so we sent a representative out there to bid for us and uh, actually bid on about three different rides out there. And we're fortunate enough that we won the bid on this swinging pirate ship, the Sea do you, Dragon. Do you have to pay extra to ride in Michael's seat or anything? Or <laughs> got to no, wear a white glove? Yeah, you got to wear a white glove or something. You know, you know what's really interesting? We we got that ride. We bid. We got that ride. Let me think. What year did he pass away? It was June twenty fifth, nineteen. 2009, I believe. Yeah. 2009. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we're not historians, long. so it's no. okay. It 2009. Matter. I'm getting my research over there. Yeah, it's all right. It's been here and we're having fun. Who cares? Well, we <laughs> bought that ride in November of 2008. Okay. And it, it was in, I mean, you know, it, it wasn't run that much. It's not like he had thousands of people come through Neverland Ranch. Right, he just right. had a few groups come through every year. And so it was in really good shape, but it had been out there in the California sun. So. We did send it in and had had some paint work done on it just to refresh the ride. Had it shipped out here, put the ride together. When we opened in May of 2009, the ride opened up. Instant hit. Everybody loved it. And then in one day in June, I was in the park. Because when you're working 15 hours a day, you don't listen to much news. Right. I had no idea what's going on in the world. I, I'm, I'm, people start showing up at our front gate. And the girls hollered at me, and they said, these people just want to go in and look at the sea dragon. I'm like, why? And they said, well, Michael Jackson died. I said, you're kidding. Said, you know, honestly, yeah. Michael and I are about the same age. Yeah, He's a yeah. young man. And I said, you're kidding. And they said, no, it's for real. So I go in and turn on the news and see if, you know, if this yeah. is really true or not. And sure enough, we had a steady stream of people showing up, just wanting to go look at the ride. And over the course of the next two weeks... We had, it looked like, a, you know, when the, like a queen or somebody dies and there's oh, a big yeah. memorial outside the palace? Yeah. That's what it looked like inside, in front well, of that I, ride. I know. I saw some flowers, some pictures. There were flowers. There were ribbons. There were People all kinds ride, of things. It, it, there was a mound of stuff in front of that ride. People yeah. would come in and they would put down flowers. They'd bring balloons. They brought yeah. posters they had made. I think we had five or six sequin gloves that people had brought and laid in front of this ride. Yeah. 
It was it was a it was like a memorial to Michael Jackson. We well, some- you know, Michael Jackson was a superstar, Gail. I mean, they, they, you say what you want to. I'm the one that that thinks he was unjustly accused, but that that has nothing to do with this. But well, uh, and you know, what? I did a memor- a memorial plaque and put over there in front of the ride after after he passed away, and and I said, you know, there were parts of his life that were questionable, and some people may have agreed or not agreed with what happened. But you cannot deny that he's a king of pop. Oh, I'm you know? telling you, his music was legendary. You know, we'll live forever, and and you know, like Elvis, he's he's one of them. You know, right. uh, you know, I, I think it's funny. We we had your dad on the show. Uh, I guess we were sitting down under the pavilion at the racetrack during one of the events, and I said, Dallas, I said, with all this stuff out here, I said, what's your favorite thing? He said, Oh, no doubt, it's that Kentucky Rumble roller coaster. And he said, Of course. You know, I don't want to ride it too much. I don't want to wear my welcome out. I said, you're welcome. I said, it's your roller coaster, you know. <laughs> yeah. how can you? But he said, man, I really like that thing. I said, well, how many times have you ridden it? He said, oh, I don't know. I've lost count, you know. D- do you like that ride as much as he does? I do. I love the ride. Do you? Uh, you know, it's exactly, I'm going to tell you, Speedy, when, when we made the decision to build that ride, it opened in May of 2006. We contracted for it the year before. It literally takes actually a year and a half before. I guess November of '04 we signed a contract. It takes building a, a wooden roller coaster is kind of like having a baby. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Nine, at least nine months. All right. And if you have bad weather in the winter, about twelve months. But it, we knew it was going to be at least a nine month project. Uh huh. So we started literally a year and a half before we knew we were going to open it. You know, building on the thing because you know it looks like it's just a bunch of of wood over there sitting on the ground, but there is probably about as much concrete under the ground as, as there is wood above the ground. Oh, I don't know. Who got to take the first ride? Well, actually, the family, the family members, we rode it that that year. We opened in May, and we had all ridden it by March because we had we had we we were lucky. We had great winter weather that winter, uh-huh. and so we actually had the ride done by the first of March. We were already had done our testing, and you know you start with the Bags of corn husks. Right, right. Corn cobs or actually corn grain. Crash dummies. So, yeah, right, dummies. We needed <laughs> there dummies. You go. Crash dummies. So we had we'd done all the testing that we needed. The state had certified it and everything. So then we could put real people on it. So, of course, we all were on the first trains that got to go out. But uh, then we had a – it was kind of a fun thing. We had already scheduled a construction tour for late March of that year. And we had invited media people. You know, because it was a big deal when we when we announced we we're going to build that. You know, that was a at the time it was about a five and a half million dollar project. Uh, in today's dollars, it would easily cost us eight million probably. To oh build yeah, today. every bit of it. Um, but it was a huge, big deal for Bowling Green, and uh, the media had been following the progress and all. So we had already planned this media day. Now people didn't know it was done. You know. They, they knew we were getting close, but they did not know we'd already been on it. Mm-hmm. So we had this media day, and then we invited a lot of coaster enthusiasts. I tell you, the only people crazier than drag racers probably are <laughs> coaster enthusiasts. Well, uh, you had a contest uh, on naming it, too, didn't you? We had a contest on naming it. We let people submit uh, names for several months there before, up to the point we were naming it. We actually were very fortunate. We had the Discovery Channel had that had come in. And they shot a documentary around the building of this coaster. It was called, there was a documentary, if you, you can still see it occasionally, uh, called Building the Biggest. They, they did three parks, and they, all three of us were building wooden coasters at the time. Yeah. And uh, I still get an email every now. I got one from Finland not too long ago. A guy said, I saw your coaster on TV. He's in Finland. And he, he emailed me and said, it looks so cool. I can't wait to get to ride it someday. But we had had this documentary done, and it it was getting ready to air, and it was just a lot of people all excited about it, you know. But we invited for their media day the coaster enthusiasts to come in and be here because, you know, they were all excited about getting another coaster to ride, and they did not know that it was ready to ride. Well, did they get to ride it then? Or? It was so special. We were all sitting in a food court, which is right in front of where the coaster is. Right, yeah. And literally talking about it, we had the 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 the, uh, the, the um, Great Coasters International are the folks who 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 uh, did the all the engineering work and built by piece by piece that roller coaster. Those guys here were here on hand, and 
we're all sitting there, and I've got those guys up there talking about, you know, all the different features and the engineering stuff and all that. And all of a sudden, a train rolls out of the station. Is that cool? And it goes up and around. Oh, and man. And it comes back in, and I'm like, okay, who wants to ride? All aboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I bet all of them held their hand up and said, let's play, right? I tell you what, that was the most exciting group of people I think I've ever seen. Well, there's a lot of excitement that goes on out here, period. I, I mean, I can remember coming out in the wintertime and, and – you guys had the Clydesdales here. I mean, they, yeah, th- this place really is cool. a happening. This th- this place is a happening now. I'm telling you, it. Uh, uh, all of the rides are. It's a never ending deal on you stepping it up and putting in more stuff and more stuff and more stuff. Uh, the neat part, guys, is that everything out here. And you correct me if I'm wrong, but just about everything out here, the gate price covers your, the tab to come yeah. play. You know, uh, and. You've done the water park now, and uh, Terry, I, we we need to come out. I think you can actually try to surf out here. They've got That's a what wave. I heard. I, I've yeah, watched, yeah, some of them pretty good. Yeah, well, I don't know whether we could do it or not, but we could. We might be able to try it. But Sean <laughs> said, "Is looking for some lifeguards. So we yeah. need to get them before we get there." Yeah, they need to. You need to make sure to hire them first before right. we come out. <laughs> But you've you've just recently expanded that with the Splash Lagoon and and all of that and man that's cool that's yeah, fun that's that was one place we found out after you know we built the ro- big roller coaster and it literally put Beach Bend on the map now I'm gonna tell you we have hosted probably anywhere somewhere between thirty five and forty different countries have been represented at Beach Bend since we built that wooden roller coaster because there are coaster enthusiasts all over the world so I we've hosted we've had the the roller coaster club of Great Britain. Has been here twice now yeah. since 06. Uh, we had the European Coaster Club here, and they were from Finland, Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Had a guy from Australia here about two summers ago. I mean, they come from all over the globe now to ride the Kentucky Rumble. How many times do they run it? When oh. They're just continuously? They ride a lot. And that's one thing. When we built that coaster, that was our goal. We wanted, we didn't want the most extreme coaster. We wanted the family to be able to ride it. Yeah. You know, it's a 48-inch height limit on it, so not the little guys can't yet ride it, but it's still short enough that, you know, usually by the time a kid's around six or so, depending on their height. Yeah, I was going to say seven well, or they eight. they know what hold on means. Yeah, yeah. they got to know what that They're is. They're big enough to ride. You know, it depends on that. Some of them maybe are seven or eight, but somewhere in that in neighborhood. So we wanted the family to be able to ride it, but more importantly, we wanted them to want to ride it again. And that, yeah. And again. And well, again. that that's when things are a hit. I mean, that's when, exactly right. When, when you when you can't get enough, you know, that's right. that's what makes it a hit. I got a buddy that works in the country music business, and he said, you know, anytime I'm listening to a new song that's brought to me, when I find one that I want to hear again, he said that's the one I pick. Yeah. You know, because it's good enough that that even I want to do it, and that's the same way with your dad. I mean, I guarantee you, if it wasn't so cold outside, he'd be wanting them to fire that thing up for him to ride it here today. You know, and it's chilly here today. It's chilly. Yeah, uh, but, but we knew after we did that, you know, we put in uh, the Sea Dragon, and we put in uh, we put in the new drop tower. I, I yeah, I was, yeah, that the, boy, that uh, uh-uh, no, I yeah, don't we do that, that from the racetrack. Yeah, yeah, we see it from the racetrack. You can see that thing from Plum Springs. You can see it from Louisville Road. You can. You can see it from a lot of places, especially if it's nighttime. We've got the LED lights on it. One of the most beautiful rides you'll ever see. The LED light package on that ride is spectacular. And it's tall enough. You can see it from all around. Well, I, the, I, the only thing I'd be seeing in my eyelids, because I'd be having them closed. I'd be scared to death <laughs> up there. One show was done out there, and we just stopped for a while in the golf cart and watched the people watch their faces when they was coming down. And that was a show in itself. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was cool. It was cool to watch yeah. that. Yeah, there's but, some but pretty interesting faces on that. What's one. What's cool about Beach Bend is you've got rides for all ages. You know what I mean? You've got a whole section for the little guys, and and they feel just as big as the big guys. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. And and it's set up for them to to have fun, and it's just little sort of little versions of the big stuff, and. And and that's cool. That's and, a cool you know, thing. And they're spread out some, too. We have one section that's pretty much devoted to the little ones. But then we have some of the little rides scattered in mm-hmm. throughout the park. And I know I had a family stop me one day and said, we love to come to your park because we've got kids of you know both ages. And the big kids don't want to just go hang in the kitty area all day long. Right. But because we have them spread out, you know, they, the whole family can still stay together and go ride stuff. So they kind of like that, too. Another thing that I think is really cool is you have a lot of entertainment 
for people my age to sit and watch. Uh, Dinky Gown, the magician, he's just a card trick guy. I mean, <clears throat> this guy makes stuff disappear right in front of you. All that kind of deal. Yeah, Dinky does a really good show over there. Uh, yeah, he's he's a, he's a good magician. Several yeah. years now, and, and gets better and better every year. I mean, he's oh, got yeah. he cuts people in half and uh, sticks swords all over through them, and yeah, makes, well, he can literally make you float in the air. Return customers. Gonna, yeah, I'm gonna have him do that with you next summer. Well, I tell you what, I'd be just as happy. I've been on this diet. If he just makes about 25 pounds disappear for me, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'll make, make me happy. Off each side. Yeah, that'll just take a little off each side. Uh, Put the swords in you. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I don't know about the sword deal. If we could and, get him to do that, I would have already done that. And then you had a talent show out here that that. Guys, to give you any idea of the kind of entertainment, one of the winners of their talent show went on to the top ten of American Idol. That's right. And, so, we, and there's another one. Really? If you're watching American Idol right now, the, two, the 2014 season, one of our other young ladies that came through our show here uh, just made the Hollywood part uh, last week. She so, the- so we're not talking about... Uh, Ma and Paul's uh, uh, Dixie's Amberie over here. We're no, talking about some, some world talent. class entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Miss Charlotte, bad as I hate to, we got to pay a bill or something, guys. Just uh, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. Right. All right, guys, we are we are back. All right, Miss Charlotte. Now, your dad and I've been friends for a long, long time. Out of all of this stuff, the racetrack, everything. One day he, I'm I'm down there and he's on his golf cart and said, "Get in here, I got to go show you something." And I said, "Okay, where are we going?" He said, "I'll show you." Well, we take off up the hill. He wanted to show me his new baby goat. <laughs> that he's there's a petting zoo here that he just loves it. Now he loves it, and and I think the goats are his buddies. They he could talk to them, I think, or something. Yeah, I think they understand him too. Do you really? <laughs> Well, he actually loves them. I mean, he, he does. really does. He, he said you started out with a couple. You got how many you got now? He's got about a hundred, I think, right now. <laughs> and and they they multiply almost daily. Oh yeah, I bet they do. I bet they yeah. do. But 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 out of everything out here that he wanted to show me, he was more proud of that little baby goat. I mean, it was cute. I'll, I'll go along. But he that was just a thrill to him that that yeah. to, to have one of those. Well, we knew you know Dad grew up on a farm. He was one of. Ten kids, nine that actually made it and grew up there in Muhlenberg County, and he he grew up working on a farm. Yeah. So even when and you know when I was a kid growing up, you know he had a real job, he had a day job, and we ran a racetrack on a weekend. Oh yeah. And but we still had to raise hogs on the side. I can remember having a box full of little pigs in our house, and my mother's pretty particular, you know. Her, oh yeah, yeah. You know our house was clean. We had this box of baby pigs in the house one winter, about like tonight, when it was really, really cold, and he was afraid to leave them outside or they'd freeze. And I can remember my little sister and I uh, just squealing with delight when the pigs dump or turned the box over. And <laughs> they got were running out of everywhere. The house. But, but we grew up with that kind of stuff. And uh, when we were building the park up here, you know, like I said, every year we'd add a little something new. And then one year he said, "Let's let's put a petting farm in." And if you notice, if you go back there to our petting farm, it's called Granny Jones's Petting Farm. Right, right. After my his mother, Granny Jones, uh, she lived to be well in her right around ninety and just was great shape the whole time. And she used to love to come up here. She'd get on the scooter with Dad occasionally and ride. Just the cutest thing. <laughs> having but, uh, fun. Having That's fun. Cool. But we so we had goats and we've had different critters over the years. We've had miniature horses a time or two and. Had a cow. She kept for people up north, it. a critter is a little furry pet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's yeah. If you don't know what a critter is, if you're if you're so farther north than we're normally going, you know, anywhere on the other side of Louisville's north. That's it. Well, I, I sort of thought Smith's Grove, but that's okay. You know, we could be Louisville if that's what you want to be. We have found out goats really will eat anything. Really, I've had customers come back and tell me that you know they, when they rent a locker key, they put it on a little bracelet around the wrist. Yeah. Well, if they don't watch it real good, it disappears. <laughs> That's a candy bar to the goat, it's a right? a candy bar for a goat, yeah. Do you make them retrieve them? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't go that far. But they they, will, they'll nip at you. And, and, you know, the little babies are so cute. That's uh, They're all pygmy goats, so they don't get real big anyway. Right. But the ba- they're all so tame because everybody who goes in there over there feeds them. You know, oh, sure, right out sure. Of and the little babies will nip at your shoestrings when you're over there, and you can just... You can pick your foot up and just lift the goat right up in the air with you. <laughs> but they're very gentle and, and very friendly, and 
We've even had them give birth over there right in front of a whole crowd of kids and families. And, you know, when a goat decides to give birth, there ain't no stopping it. But it's time to go, isn't it, huh? That's right. Time to go. All right, let's let's ask Miss Charlotte, what's your favorite ride here, yours personally? Well, that's a tough one, Speedy. Probably my very, very favorite is the Kentucky Rumbler. You, you like it I'm over a, everything. I'm a coaster gal, too. But okay. the new Vortex we put in last year is a close. It and the Sea Dragon are my problem. <laughs> I can't do a tie for second. So we're going to we're going to make one whole section, right? Yeah, you got to I I like all three of those at just okay. a whole. The drop ride is nice and I have done it. But but I have to say the Vortex and the Sea Dragon are my my second two. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh out of the water park. Any particular thing you like Lazy River? Uh who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, that would be the only time to There's slow no you down. There's no effort involved there. Well, that would be the only time to slow you down, would be put yeah. you on one of those those deals, those tube things, and put you in the Lazy River, and we could find you there. You know, yeah. the rest of the time, you're like a little dot. You're running around everywhere. Yeah, but, that's true. No, that, the, the, that whole water park expansion was something that we really, really needed to do here at Beach Bend because we yeah. were finding we were getting crowds big enough that, you know, people, when it gets hot in the summertime, they want to cool off. Sure. And uh, we, our crowds are getting big enough that, you know, we've still got the, we got the original swimming pool. It's not the, I mean, we we have totally refurbished it, spent a whole lot of money redoing the pool, but it still sits in the original hole that was there when you were growing up here. Right. Actually, got, that was, that Many was one day of the, be out there. that was one of my first jobs that I ever had. I was one of the lifeguards at that swimming were pool. You really? Yes, I was. And, and there used to be a Ferris wheel. Yep. And everybody, all the guys, would want to ride the Ferris wheel. So they could look over the fence. Well, you could. Well, no, the actually, the dressing rooms. The, actually, the dressing rooms didn't have the dressing rooms didn't have roofs on them. No, no, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> they didn't have a roof on them at all. And so it would be funny. Here's all these guys lined up to ride the Ferris wheel, and nobody could figure out why that was until they got to really thinking about and it. And I never knew why until now. Well, you know, see. I told you we were old guys. We could explain this to you. But but that was the reason. You had a perfect view in the ladies' locker room. I can know. remember being so little that Mom would take me. My dad would be racing, and we'd go swimming earlier, and she would take me. I was so little that we'd go into the ladies' side, and I'd stand mm-hmm. there while she got into her bathing suit, you know. And I, I didn't think nothing about it. But I got about 16 or 17. She wouldn't let me do that no more. Yeah, <laughs> sort of stopped that, did it? Stopped that quick. Yeah, I know. Anything in plans for Beach Bend for this year we don't know about? No, we don't have any big surprises this year. We are we're kind of taking a sit back, breathe, and do some much needed refurbishment this year. We had well, it doesn't look like it. Anything needs refurbishing. It's gorgeous out here. Well, it, and it is. The park was really pretty last year, but we had um, at least three rides that um, we we really wanted to repaint. We've got you know we've got some really great new rides in the park, but we've got some really classic old rides that we don't want to get rid of things like the flying bobs it's uh, yeah i know what those are like the old um oh some people call them uh, an alpine uh, alpine slide, slide or something or not a, no not they call it uh, what do they call that thing oh shoot i don't know it goes around in circles like a himalaya yeah like the guy's up there talking the, like he's a dish jockey and yeah stuff. the Heaven's flying yeah. bob actually the the cars on it actually swing out as you go around yeah okay on the himalaya you just kind of go up down the hills but it's a really popular ride. It's great. There, there's a, a not a DJ, but there's a, the the ride attendant actually has music and talks to the kids. And he interacts the with the riders. Yeah, the ride goes forward and it goes backwards, and it's a really really popular ride in the park. Yeah, yeah. But it's about a 1969 model. They don't make that ride like that right, anymore. Right, right. And uh, we wanted to hold on to it, and we had mechanically completely rebuilt the ride, but th- the outside of it needed refurbishing. We did a partial. We did some of the scenery on it last year, but the uh, the arms and the, the cars that you sit in actually needed painting. So we have had completely dismantled it. We completely rebuilt the floor on the ride and had all the, of the cars painted. Uh, we took our hip-hop drop ride apart, did a complete refurbishment on it, had all of it painted and, and it's back. And then we took our swing ride apart. Had it refurbished uh, mechanically and then sent it in and had it repainted. So we've been doing a lot of um, refurbishment this year. And then every two years you have to completely take the Kentucky Rumbler trains 
off of the coaster, take them apart, tear them apart, and rebuild them every two years. That's so well, far. A, a lot of people that are listening may not realize this, but uh, this thing, it, even though you guys work like a tyrant to keep everything exactly perfect and safe, the state sends inspectors here every year, mm-hmm. and they go over every ride. So, so guys, these are really, really a safe place to bring your kids. It's not come. like going to the Kentucky, it's not like state, go, Kentucky Fair or Southern Kentucky Fair. Yeah, or, or going to one of those things. Minutes yeah, yeah, that have been traveling all over the country. And, uh, yeah, they've been looked at, but not quite as hard as, as they're looked uh, at in no, a place like we're this. we're not allowed. We can't even open here until everything has gone through the state inspection right, process. Right. And then they come back. Oh, probably at least once a month or yeah, several come times it. during the year, just looking at stuff and making That's sure a good things. thing. Oh, it's a great thing. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't want your kids on it if my kids, you know, if I don't feel good about putting my kids on That's it. That's right. So That's right. We want everything. We And we have a really good safety record here I'm very proud of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. it's a great, fun place. And, and what's really cool is you sell a season pass to this thing, uh, which is <laughs> – I don't know any other way to say other than cheap. <laughs> you know, it's, well, it's cheap. It's a good value spend. Yeah, it well, really it's, to me, it's cheap. When you get that many days of fun, possible fun, that mm-hmm. you could come for that money, uh, what what are those costs, Charlotte? They were $99.99 for a Like them nines, don't you, girl? Like them nines. That's for that retail stuff. I yeah, know. I know. I understand. That's what's teaching retail school. But, no, it's a, it's, it's a, it is a good deal. I mean, we've had people. It's up to hundred days in it, so it gets it's down. hundred days. It's yeah, a it gets a, a dollar day. a day. I mean, yeah. give me a break, you know. And we actually had two years ago. We had a grandpa who bought passes for eleven grandkids. Uh-huh. And I tell you what, those grandkids will forever remember that summer. Oh because yeah, because they came six days a week. Maybe the all eleven didn't come every day, but there was some group of them that came every at least six days a week. That oh, that's summer. okay. And Sorry. oh no, they loved it. I mean, great. And we all got to know grandpa. You know, it was a great, a great. Well, that's uh, why it's a family family, family place. Yeah, those kids will, will remember that summer from from now on. I'm sure, but it's a, you know, with with the new additions in the water park, in you know, when we built the wave pool and the lazy river and the Tiki Island slides and tipping bucket and all that, uh, when you combine that with the, the the old swimming pool, which by the way we put a lily pad challenge across it year before last with the the rope thing where you have to try to navigate across the floaty things in the oh i really need to try that (laughs) Uh, you put that in just to liven up the old swimming pool yeah Um, and then of course we had the old children's area that's called lot of water island already that for the smaller kids and right the big water slides raging rapids have been there for for a few years now but you can literally spend a whole day just in the water park. Oh, you sure. If you sure. don't want to get out and ride, if it's too hot or whatever, you can just go right over to the water park and spend a whole day here just doing that. Boy, I tell you what, this this place is happening. I mean, it's fun, it's neat, it's well taken care of, and it's it's safe. You, uh, uh, you know, it, it's just cool. Friendly now. staff. Everybody's yeah. friendly. Oh, yeah, everybody's nice and they're happy and they're smiling. And, well, and, and you we know. We try to make it that way, Spivy. I won't be honest. Some days it's hard to get everybody here to be. Well, as it's nice hot and as stuff you like that too, right. you know. But you got to understand but, that that you know it's hot for everybody, not it just is. them. Well, you know. Here's the difference in our parking and some. Number one, you're not going to stand in line all day long. Yeah. To get on a ride, and I I've done it myself. You know, go somewhere and spend two hours in the hot sun with the kids who are unhappy and hanging on you and all that. You won't stand in lines, and if you do have a problem, you're going to find me. Because I'm here every day. You gonna, or you're going to find my dad. He is here every day. Or you're going to find my son, Reed, who is here every day. You're going to find one of us. And we don't have to climb the corporate ladder to find you an answer. We'll take care of whatever it is right Well, th- there. that's a beauty part about it being a family-owned establishment and not big corporate America. You know, you guys care. Corporate yeah. America cares as long as you leave your money at the gate. And then they really don't care what happens to you at that point because they're concerned with the bottom line. And and you guys are a family organization, and and just like your dad on a roller coaster. I mean, y'all have as much fun with this stuff as the public. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's cool. It's really cool. Well, we, there's a fond spot in my heart and in my dad's and, and my kids now because they've grown up here now too. Uh, we love this place, or we wouldn't do it. Yeah. Well, we're 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 going to talk to uh, Reed and for for just a couple of minutes before we get done with this thing because uh, it's got to be the coolest thing going. 
to go through school and, and they say, well, what do you do? So, well, my parents own an amusement park, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's Especially what I'm going to be. Yeah. Park. And then when you say beach Ben amusement park, boy, you become the big man on campus, whether you are or not, you know, but, uh, uh, it, it's a cool deal. And, and it's, it's been that way, honestly, since my whole life, Terry, I guess yeah, you exactly. do, huh? You know, it's, it, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of memories here. There for us. It, well, a lot of members, a lot of people. I, tell, I hear a lot of stories. People come in the gate and they'll tell me, I had my first date with my oh, husband yeah, here. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Reed and I, honestly, Reed and I today, we're just, we were on the campus of Western Kentucky University today doing a little, kind of a little job, mini job fair. We're sure. here, well, it's January, and we're already trying to hire lifeguards and ride attendants and food so- service operators sure. starting now. Cause sure. we, we got to hire about 300 people between now and early april and get them trained and ready for the season so we're out actually already doing job fairs now but today while we were at this little job fair uh, a lady who works there on campus stopped and told me i met my husband at beach bend park there you go was, <laughs> that, happy was she happy or either that or she might have been mad <laughs> well, at you you know she's still married to him so i guess well, it must have worked happy. yeah, yeah it must have worked, worked. but we hear we hear a lot of stories like that you know or people come back and tell us about Stuff the stinky monkeys, yeah, oh yeah, stuff yeah, they remember yeah. from years ago. So it's it's fun just to hear the stories. Well, it it's you know Terry and I just you know we just sort of when we pulled in and and got here a few minutes early, we just sort of sat there in deja vu for a few minutes and just relived things. You that, remember the that, alligators? Well, now let me tell you about that. Uh, when you worked for Mister Garvin, that here. was my second job. When you worked for Mister Garvin, you didn't do just one thing. Well, you don't you, for Dallas Jones. Either. Well, I'm sure you don't for <laughs> Dallas, but but our other job when and I, I told this on an earlier show, but our other job when we worked as lifeguards was cleaning the alligator pit, and thank goodness they fed them really Maybe well. That'd be a good thing for our guards this year. Reed, well, you know, what we had to do was was slide. actually the alligator pit. Well, they had taken a ride out that was one of those little boat rides that went round and round, and it was a little pond, and that's where the alligators was. That was the alligator Hilton back then, and. Uh, our deal was to get them out of the pond over in the corner and one be in there with a broom, keeping them over there while the other one scrubbed it with Ajax. Oh, Lord. And so it was some pretty quick scrubbing going on there. But, uh, yeah, I know about the alligators a lot. There's an old story that, uh, and it was really a story because it never happened. But this place, guys, when you come in, it's a beautiful place, lots of lush landscaping and everything. But it's on the river. The river actually circles it. There was a story about people back then that were, uh, it cost a dime to get in, but there were people that weren't paying the dime, and they would swim across the river and come into the park. Well, Mr. Garvin was a very <laughs> entrepreneur-type fellow that would think about everything. So they had a flood like happened out here not too long ago, and they said that some of the alligators got loose, and they wound up in Barron River. Mm. They didn't have anybody swim across anymore, you know. Of course, I'm sure he just promoted that real well. That Mr. Charlie told that story. A he probably of told it lots of times, and yeah. and uh, there there were some other things that stand out in my memory about this place. That uh, a lot of things, rather. That uh, man, it was cool, and and it's still. I mean, here I'm a 65 year old guy, and it's just as cool now to come here to me as it was when I was eight or nine. Don't you think oh, so? Oh yeah, Gary? big time. You know, we I uh, mean, back then it was just like it is now. The kids, I mean, it was the biggest thing. Yeah, since yeah just on a, a different. Shirt. Yeah, just a different era. Just a different era. But it's it's still cool. It's still fun. You never and, turned down a chance to come to Beach Bean. No, never. And and guys, if you're out there and you have the opportunity, do whatever you got to do to come because it's a blast. It's fun. Uh, and you were talking about a, a way from here. We actually have listeners for this little show. We have some in France, and we have a, our buddy Rob that's in the Netherlands in Holland, and he emails us about every other day. So, Rob, when you come over here for the opening of the motorsports park, he's got a Corvette. He actually shipped a Corvette from Holland to here to drive it around and come to the Corvette Museum. He's a big wow. he's a big Corvette guy. So now we've given you the fun stuff to do, buddy, when you come back from Holland. So you better come out here and have some fun doing this. you got to ride the roller coaster. you got to ride the roller coaster, yeah. Charlotte, the, you know, I, I know how busy you are, and, and I appreciate you taking a few minutes to, to spend with us on, on event radio because this this place is a blast. Any, anything you want to tell us that we've forgotten maybe to ask? Baby, I, I appreciate you letting us talk and reminisce because we don't get to do that very often. We get caught. You up can't in slow season. you down long enough to do it. Right? You know, you get you get caught up in the season and you don't have time to do that. So yeah. it's actually fun to sit here and reminisce about 
growing up here and doing all the things we did it with our families and all. But I would just encourage people to come out. I still have people, believe it or not, right here in Bowling Green, that you're going to stop at a convenience store or something and say something to the clerk, like about Beach Bend, and she'll like, oh, I've never been there. Or I haven't been there in 30 years. And I'm like, man, you don't know what you're missing. It's, it's Exactly, yeah. You know, there's still some of the old stuff left, but not very much. Because between the, the sellouts and the bankruptcy that Millsap had and the floods, yeah, uh, the, a lot of the old stuff is gone. We still have about three structures that are remaining from the old park. But the rest of it, we've literally built almost from the ground up, and it's really, and, really nice now. And, and that's one thing that we didn't touch on that we need to. You do a tremendous amount of corporate events here for mm-hmm. the, the company p- parties and that kind of thing, and you have the huge buildings, the, the, the pavilions and things built in here. Uh, and by the way, there the bathrooms up here too are like the racetrack. They're air conditioned too, so that's right. you know, that's we, and air. Yeah, that's our pet peeve. We do our the, best to keep them clean. Oh, you do do that. I, well, we were down at one of the re- events. I don't remember. And of course, we kid your dad all the time about the bathrooms that he's, you know, he's he's pro just like we are because we we grew up with the other era, you know, and we re- we really appreciate those at a racetrack. But one of the events here, he had people on a golf cart every hour going through there cleaning those things. Yep. And I said, buddy, this is not the Hilton. You know, I said, this is this is a racetrack here. He said, they're my guest. And that's he right. said, that's the way I look at it. Everybody they are my guest. Those, the doors are our guests. And we, the park is the same way. We have a crew that oh, does I know nothing, it is. Beautiful. go from restroom to restroom trying to keep them spotless and clean. And I'm not going to say that, you know, occasionally you can clean one and five minutes later somebody oh, comes yeah, and but, but, this. But when we hear about it, we're on it. And I'll be honest, you know, that's, that's the one thing about growing up in a family business you know, if I hear about it and, and the cleaning crew is on the other side of the park and they're not going to get here for 10 minutes, me and or another manager, we will jump in and take care of whatever problem comes along. And well, you we care, want it to be gal. perfect for our guests. You care. I mean, they're your guests just like they're coming to your house. That's and, right. Because this is your house. You know, I mean, you spend more time here than you do at home, probably. Absolutely. You're so, kidding. This is your Way home. more than <laughs> yeah, I spend at yeah. home. Just well, ask I, my husband. Yeah, there you go. Well, no, he, he'd, be, he'd be on me. I won't do that. <laughs> Miss Charlotte, thank you so much for joining us. We want to we want to take just a second. We want to get Reed in here too. We want to get so. Reed in here, and Reed can touch on. We get, we we just sat down yesterday and came up with a few ideas for this year. Uh huh. And I'll let Reed tell you about some of the things we're going we're going to try some things that I think will be interesting out at the park this year. Cool. We want we want to get a lot of people to come out that haven't been here in a long time. And well, we want to help you. We're going <laughs> we're going to give away some stuff. And Reed oh. will tell you about it. Here Ooh, in a that be sounds like fun. a good idea. We'll yeah. find all out. Guys, we're going to let Miss Charlotte go, but uh, we're going to find out from Reed all the happenings just as quick as we take a couple of minute break, and we will be right back. All right, guys, we are back, and uh, uh, we have brought Mister Reed Gonzalez. You, he, he gets to uh, anything goes wrong, Mama or Granddaddy wears him out. I'm sure because you are the man that gets a lot of responsibility dumped on your shoulders. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I would say... Uh, well, if they didn't think you could handle it, they wouldn't have done it. Yeah, when you had Mom on earlier, she said, when I was a little girl, I did not envision that I would ever be running an amusement park. And I was like, nope, that's not me. I was six years old. I said, yep, give me about 10 years, and I'll be right there. So, You're going to be there doing it. You knew, you knew you wanted to do that from the beginning, right? Yeah, I'd say it was something that... Uh, it was just, who doesn't want to work in an amusement park? It's amazing because you your job description is to do this or this, but the end goal is to make people have a good time, make them happy. So. Lots of kids, when you were young, want to come spend the night with Reed to come to work the next morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. is it? <laughs> it's something like that. It was uh, a little extra popularity, say my grandfather owned an amusement park, but I try not to flaunt it, you know. And then you wind up telling me he owns two racetracks, too. <laughs> I mean, you know. The, you know, the amusement parks were cool for my buddies, and then I said racetracks, and that's when the girls started talking to me. So Really? Like, believe it or not. You know, I guess that's – boy, I tell you what, things change when you get – and, and yeah. I, I see things now that when I was a kid, and, and the one thing that amazes me are these big pickup trucks. When I was a kid and in school, if you had a pickup truck, you couldn't get a date no way from Sunday, you know. But but now if you've got a truck that, that 18 feet in the air with 14-foot tires and stuff like that, man, you get every girl in town, you know. Baby, you're right. Well, it's, it's living proof. Look at our uh, diesel drags out at the racetrack. Right, they, right. They attract – the biggest one of the biggest crowds of the year so well i know you don't look at that though right uh not me no, no i didn't figure you would i've got a lady that's not listening right now but if she was uh 
I have to be respectful. So, man, but I there's not, there is nothing <laughs> so wrong. Got class. I mean, he can try. get out of anything. Yeah. Try. Hey, you can go in Riley's Bakery, but you don't have to eat everything in the case. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's okay to go in there and look. You know. I like that. That's a yeah. Well, I try to justify everything. You know. Yeah. What's Reed's favorite thing in the park? My favorite ride in the park. You know, I'm a huge roller coaster fan. And uh, I actually, my girlfriend and I, and mom and I a lot too, uh, we'll actually just travel to these amusement parks. We'll go to Pennsylvania, we'll go to Wisconsin, we'll go to California, just random places and we'll ride roller coasters. And I've always been a huge roller coaster fan. So the Kentucky Rumbler is truly one of the best wind coasters, not in Bowling Green, I mean there's only one, not in Kentucky. Not in the U.S., but in the world. Oh, I think so. I mean, yeah. it's been ranked the top 25 wind coaster in the world ever since it opened in 2006. No way. Well, it should be. It's and cool. It's amazing. And so the Kentucky Rumbler is no doubt my favorite. You know, I can't lie and say, you know, Vortex is an awesome ride. It opened last year. It's a great. Sea Dragon's great. I'm a huge fan of Zero G, our drop tower. Um, I'll ride that thing all day just because it has spectacular views going up. But the Kentucky Rumbler, hands down, you know. My grandfather agrees. My mother agrees. And I'm saying the same thing. So Well, got to be cool, right? There's no debate there. All right. That, that's all right. Hey, nothing wrong with that, buddy. Yeah, that's right. Drag racing, ever, did you ever bite the, the, the bug there? You know, drag racing, actually, you know, we talked about how I was six years old. And I had my sixth birthday party at the amusement park at Beach Bend Hall. Okay. And that used to be the entrance of the amusement park. So that's when I got a taste of it. But I remember even younger... Uh, Music City Raceway, the racetrack in Gouldsville, Tennessee, my mother and father operate. That's where I spent a lot of my time when I was a toddler, when I was two, three, four. And I have many memories of sitting up on the counter and just watching the drags. But I mean to do it. To do it. The drag, to be, to be, to turn into the, with the race car. I had a little bit, you know, right when I was young, junior dragster racing started to become popular. Um, I never got in one junior dragster, but I'm connected to it now deeply. Well, your 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 younger brother is into it big time and does well at it. Yeah, my brother Grant, he's 15 year old now, 15 years old now, and he's been racing since he was 11. And we, uh, he won a points championship in Music City, runner up second here at Beach Bend. And we just love them. It's a great family bonding thing, a brother bonding sure. thing. It's a lot of fun. Junior dragster racing is a great sport within the sport of drag racing. So. I have a huge affinity for it. Drag racing is something that uh, will always be around our family, and it's a great thing to have. Yeah, well, it's cool, and it. Yeah. We we've said a lot of times that uh, there are a whole lot worse things for young people to do than become a drag racer. That, yeah. The ones that I know, and and trust me, I've been around long enough to know a lot of them. They've all turned out pretty doggone good. Yeah, I'd have to agree there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, mom says that you're going to tell us about everything new and cool that's coming up. Man, there is some awesome stuff. We uh, a lot of times when we want to do something new and great, you know, we get with our with I call him Pepal. That's Dallas for me, the <laughs> owner. You know, mom calls him dad, but I call him Pepal. And it all everybody time, else calls him Mister Jones. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> sir. Hey, sir, Mister Jones. Yeah, right. You only call him Dallas if you've been working here for over five years. Yeah, or, or known him as long as I've known him. I call exactly. him Dallas all the time. But uh, yeah. Pep all, you know, we get together and we kind of brainstorm what can we do for this next year? What can we bring to the table? And uh, we had an opportunity to actually do that yesterday uh, just to spark some ideas. You know, we want to uh, – I hear stories all the time about what Beach Bend was back in the day, how, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the stories of they came. And your mom was talking about how somebody met their, uh, their husband here, and I'm too young to obviously remember any of that. So I'm thinking, you know. What can we take from nostalgically? You hear things all the time. They used to have county days at the park where, depending on sure. the county you were at, um, you get in for probably a free admission back then since it was only a dime. Whatever the deal was, we want to bring back some of those special deals. And uh, this year we're going to try every weekday and Sundays we're going to do a special daily deal. Okay. And I won't go to all the deals, but um, I have, I'll list you a couple of my favorite ones. You Are you familiar with Dippin' Dots ice cream? Yes, sir. Dippin' Dots are hot. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, Dippin' Dots are good, too. I, mean, I say hot, but they're really very, very cold. But you know what I mean. They're a great item, and everybody loves Dippin' Dots. And it's one of those things that we have two locations that sell Dippin' Dots in the park. That, right. Um, they're both, one's right beside the go-kart track by the okay. entrance, and the other is inside of the water park. So you can have access from either area. The uh, They're extremely popular. We found that people come to the park, 
And a lot of times they're not going to leave unless they bought Dippin' Dots. So on Thursdays, every Thursday starting in June, and if it works well, we'll continue it throughout the season, is free Dippin' Dot Thursdays. You're kidding. No joke. No, what we'll be doing yeah, on boy, Thursday. Come out here. They, I eat so many of those things, I get the brain freeze. You know what I mean? They just, I love them. I, it, they're it, great. You know, Mom has, has already been in contact with our Dippin' Dot sales rep today to get something set up. Yeah. Because we are going to literally, every guest that enters the gates on Thursday, no matter how you pay to get in, whether you bought a ticket beforehand, you're buying a ticket then, or if you're a season pass holder, you get a voucher for one free Dippin' Dots. Boy, that's great. That's fun. It, it's fun because, you know, like I said, everybody loves Dippin' And it's Dippin different. Dots. It's different, you know? And believe it or not, you know, Pepo thought of this idea, and he said, well, what do we have that attracts to certain people? And Dippin' Dots, they really do. Yeah, and they're good. Yeah, they're very good. Okay. All right. What what What's other than Dippin' Dots? Other than Dippin' Dots, we like to appeal to, um, especially my grandfather, he uh, he thinks the world of our military service members. I'm sure he does. We've always done a military discount um, for not only the military member, but also their family. Um Whenever they came to the park, and we also sell some discounted tickets at Fort Knox, Fort Campbell, other military bases. But this year, and we're going to try a new program, and I kind of encourage them to in this because I think it's important. But every military member with an active or retired ID, so even if they're currently in service or if they're on leave or if they're retired, will get in free to the park. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah, and it's great. All season, well, they should. That's a that's really a that's one. Yeah, it's well, you know, I mean they they are they are doing what they're doing it. To make it everybody else be able to come here. They're true heroes. You know? That's they, right. Yeah, I'll tell you. And, That's uh, right. All year, you know, we're going to try it, and it's not going to be like we'll try it in June. No, all year. Anytime you come to the park, free. And we're still going to give them the discount for their family because obviously um, – the now, do, they, do they have to be in uniform or just have their military ID, or how does that work? They can be in their swim trunks and flip-flops with a military ID, and that's all we need. That's great. Yeah, but we, we want to honor them. So anybody that's active or retired from any branch, you know, Army, military, or excuse me, Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, anything, with that active or retired ID, um, you come play on us because it's it's a truly something that we like to honor. So any day out of the year. That's a cool way to give back, buddy. That that yeah. That's a smooth deal. That's great. I couldn't agree. And that's, you know, I said it's a daily deal, so that's not even one of our daily ones. But that is a one that runs all year long. Uh, but we're very excited about that one. And we're excited to have it out there because I think it's something that's very deserving for those that get to use it. Exactly. Exactly. There, well, there's, there's tons of stuff, guys. There's, Anything else? Yeah, there's one more. All right. And we're ready. <laughs> mommy, li- mommy likes this one for a reason, so I'll say it. All right. Mommy Mondays. Well, that's cool. Now, who makes the most of the decisions in the household? <laughs> you just said it, Mommy. You just who, said it, buddy. Who, My house, there's no doubt. You who, know? who thinks they make the decisions in the household? All the guys think they yeah, do, but they, they don't do. do it. Yeah. But, you know, while they're doing whatever they're doing, mommies are making the decisions. That's right. Mommies mom, are the if mom ain't happy, buddy, nobody's happy. Yeah. What is what it? it is. Happy, happy wife, happy life? That's it. Yeah. That's something it. Something like that. So we've decided to honor the moms, you know, give them a day where, um, they can bring their family and save a little bit of money. So every mom that enters the gate on Mondays will be half price. Just that simple. Cool. Uh, mommy Mondays. And it's as simple as that. Uh, you bring your children and your family and you're a mother and you get in for half price. And if you have a discount ticket for your children, bring it as well. But Mommy Monday, my mom's half price all day. And that's every Monday. So like I said, it's uh, there's something special about uh, – making the decision to bring your family to Beach Bend, and we appreciate that, and we want to honor that for you. Well, it, that's been the, the ultimate decision for, for a lot of people in this area, and this, of course, goes a, a long way away from here, too. But, uh, guys, if you get within a couple of hundred miles of Beach Bend, you need to just steer the Griswold wagon this way, you know, because you're going to have a good time now. I mean, and, and you're – you're not only going to make just the kids happy. You're going to make everybody in the family happy. If you come once, you will be back. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That is our goal. And uh, like you were speaking earlier on the uh, corporate America, you know, we got your money. You're in here. Let's make you happy. Beach Bend is so far from that. I know. We want you to be happy after your first visit, your second visit, your third visit, on and on and on. And it's truly a family fun atmosphere. You know, I, I quote the Kentucky Rumbler, the big roller coaster and Vortex, but there's 30 other rides that are just family rides. Yeah. And all the concessions are family friendly. Yeah. I yeah, mean, you, you know, don't you come in here and get the kids and still have some money in your pocket. That's, that's right. right. You don't you don't have to buy the $8 Coca-Cola, right. you know, and then the stuff like that. And that's that's important for a family guy cuz let's face it guys, the economy is not flying yet. I mean, it's no. doing better. But 
you know, it's it's you still got to watch a little bit of it, you know. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and we pride ourselves on that. We pride ourselves on providing good family fun at a great value, and there's nothing better, you know, than just the ability to, you know, mom's happy if her family's happy, right. dad's happy if he's not spent, you know, a boatload of cash. Right. And kids are happy. You know how you make kids happy. So that's it. Yeah. The combination of the the rides and attractions, the water park, the shows. The shows are fantastic. Oh, sure they are. And I can't talk about those enough. Especially, you know, we have a great Wild West show and our uh, magic and illusions of Dinky Gowan. I mean, it just it's literally you go on and on and on about what we offer here. That's great. Uh, but just in general, the the value that you can have at Beach Bend when you visit for a day. Yeah, and you pay at the gate and you're done. You can put your purse up and forget yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and it's just, I, I don't know. I, I think it's cool. Huh? Yeah. You don't even have to park, pay to park, guys. No, I mean, no they got lots of nice parking places out here. We found one real easy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did come on a little, probably a day where most people weren't thinking about 11 degree weather for riding a coaster. But Well, I mean, you know. It just depends on your. We're a little weird anyway, buddy. Yeah, you I mean, know. You know, we're, you know, we're different. I may have, I would, I would consider riding a coaster in 11 degree weather if. If the the time called right, you know, if if we saw the Kentucky Rumble riding right running right now, I don't know if we could we say might no. have to. Well, we might have yeah. to put these microphones down and yeah. go up there. You know, it'd be fun. Yeah, well, we we won't do that to you. But but what's really cool, guys? We we've been able to do this, and and we've we've got to sit here and look out the the big glass windows at all the stuff out there, and and not only see the way it is now, but to close your eyes and. For Terry and I, the way we grew up, you know. That's I mean, what I'm sitting here reminiscing about some of the things. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, it was just, my dad, my mother out here. Oh, you yeah. know, it's, uh, great place, great place. Reed, my friend, thank you for joining us uh, uh, on Event Radio. We we try our heart out to have a lot of fun with this, and, and uh, you can't have more fun yep. than th- for us on the radio than to come to Beach Bend to have it, you know. I mean, that's just that's great for us. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I mentioned some of the, uh, the daily specials, but – I won't give them all away. We like. Oh to no, you got to come see them. A few secrets, but yeah, maybe it's all right. if you check online on our website, which is beachbend dot com, that's b e e c h bend dot com, we'll post might be them. a surprise or yeah. two there, right? Check them out because you know, really, any day you come, except for Saturdays, we want you to come during the week because that's the best time. Oh yeah, you get a special deal depending on what what it, just what day you come. You never know. There you go. Well, you got to come to find out, guys, and the surprises are always important. I kind of like the Mommy Monday. Yeah, there you go. You just want to see the moms. I want to see the moms. <laughs> That's what it is. Guys, we're going to take a little quick break, and we'll be back to close this thing out. All right, guys, we're back, and uh, T-Bone, what do you think? Is I'll it- tell you what, baby, I've really enjoyed it. Oh, Mitch I- Charlotte is treated us like kings, and Reed has just blew me away. And uh, I thought he was Wolfman Jack here oh, for a while. Was I wasn't sure what the <laughs> Like I said earlier, reminiscing about all the old times we had up here, we'd come here swimming every day. Oh, yeah. What, yeah, it cost a quarter to get in the pool oh, then? I don't know. It wasn't much, but it, but it was. Uh, well, the they thing about you it, come, you put a ring around it. Yeah, well, that's what it was. You know, actually, I was the one riding a roller coaster, I mean, the Paris wheel a lot, looking in a girl's dressing room. But, uh, you know, it, it, this place has always been just really special to us. And, and to get to come out here, guys, and – and get to talk to Miss Charlotte, get to talk to Reed, and and sit around and look at all this stuff. This has been a great afternoon for me. It's been fun for me, and and uh, I know it has been you too. You know, a lot of old memories. Yeah. Well, we're old guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We knew we was going to live this long. We took better care of ourselves. Oh, a lot better. A lot. Better. Well, I like to tell people I'm just thirty. With 34 years experience. Well, that might be it. Yeah. Some believe yeah. you, some don't. Well, you know, I I think that, that I'm going to be 18 till I die, you know, or I'm going to try to anyway. Guys, we want to thank you for listening to Event Radio. We appreciate it more than you know. We also appreciate our sponsors more than they know. And uh, we can never thank either one of you all enough. There's no telling where we'll come to next, but uh, I guarantee we won't come from anywhere that's any more fun than today's show and, and this place that we're we're doing it from if beach you're bend. around bowling green come to beach bend beach bend park be splash sorry. lagoon is where it's at it's fun it's a happening and t-bone i think we need to quit this and go out and see if there ain't something out there we can get into even though it's a little chilly you play Don't you think we should? yeah we can play with the goats all right we will guys thank Say you bye. again for, thank you again for listening bye you've been listening to event radio covering local drag racing, stock car racing, motorcycles, go-karts. If it's got wheels and you can race it, you heard about it here. 
Event Radio is Motorsports Radio on Steroids. Join us next time with your hosts, Spivy Williams and Terrible Tea Guy.